Hey, I think I'll cook myself some salmon for dinner. Uh, I bought this nice salmon. It's So I can't eat the salmon until I get it out of the fridge. This isn't a good as I thought it would be. Maybe I should plan this out. What's his plan? His plan? Russians don't take a dump, son, without a plan. Let, let's figure out what we need to do to make the salmon. Uh, all nice and cooked. Well, cooking salmon's not very complicated. I take the salmon out of the package. I put it in uh, the frying pan with a little oil. And I put it on my stove. What's so hard about that? Well, first of all, I'm not ready to put it in my pan because my pan needs washed. I'm not ready to put the pan on the stove because my stove is one of these little portable ones and needs to be put uh, on the countertop. So I guess it's not as simple as I thought. There's a bunch of steps here. One, get the salmon out of the fridge. Two, uh, take the salmon out of its packaging. Three, wash the pan out so I can cook in it. Four, put the stove up on the countertop. Uh, five, put oil in the pan. Six, put the salmon in the pan. Uh, seven, turn on the stove. And uh, eight, uh, when it's done, remove it and put it on a plate. That's nine, I guess. And so this is a little more complicated than we thought. Okay, here's Block Swirl. This is a little toy world with some blocks, and uh, the triangular block can't have anything put on it. And um, we have a robot grip that can raise and lower, move side to side, and grip the block that's at the bottom. And if we want something like, we want the red block to be to the right of the yellow block, then we're going to need a set of steps. And it's not obvious here what the steps are. You can work it out if you're human in a few steps, or in a few minutes, but still, it takes some thinking. Now, what if we had thousands of blocks and complicated uh, uh, constraints on how they moved and... Uh, this could get to be a hairy problem. Well, here's a complicated problem to plan. Uh, what if you're building a new airport and you have thousands of workers who are going to be each needing the appropriate pieces of, of steel pre-cut to shape in the right places at the right time and things that are made off-site have to be in the right places at the right time and the plumbers can't be doing work at the same time as the electricians in the room because there's not enough space and uh, you can only uh, do things in certain order and there are thousands of things. This could just become a real nightmare to try to plan out with pencil and paper. So. It seems like we need to have uh, planning tools to write them. We could write a, a separate program for each one, but uh, these look like they might be complicated programs to write, um, and it's all the same problem. So let's divide, divide off a separate planner library, and we'll have a planner that can solve any plan. That's a planner. So, we have a bunch of steps. We call them actions. Each action is going to have a, a set of things that you need to have true before you, a, a set of conditions that, is, that are true before you are allowed to do that action. I can't cook the salmon in the pan until the pan is clean. 
we may have a set of negated conditions, conditions that simply uh, that, that have to be false before we can do this. I can't cook the salmon until I've taken it out of the plastic packaging. We're also going to want the actions to do things. So uh, they will either add or subtract conditions. If I cook the salmon, it uh, removes uncooked salmon in pan and, re and adds cooked salmon in pan. If I take the packaging off, it removes salmon in package and gives me salmon. When should I use a planner? Well, when I have a bunch of actions that I'm not sure what order to assemble them in and uh, they may have complicated interactions and I ultimately need a sequence that accomplishes my goal. That's when you use a planner.